Hi everyone, I'm making this video to hopefully help the uh, increasing number of scan and cut users who are buying my SVGs, which is fantastic. Um, I'm not a scan and cut user, I don't um, use Canvas Workspace really, but I am having to get to grips with it a little bit so I can at least tell people what to do. And with what I've been looking at over the last few days, I've discovered uh, some of the reasons why people are having a little bit of difficulty. So, the, I'm working on the downloaded version of Canvas Workspace. A lot of people work online because they have a really good online system. Uh, and of course, if you're mobile, you would work on that online version as well. There are quite a few different versions of this software you can work with. But I have the free software which I've downloaded to my PC. So the way to bring in an SVG is you go to this import button and I'm going to bring in first today a file which I know comes in which is really friendly to Canvas Workspace and it's this little envelope box. This is a, a small box which actually is in the shape of an envelope and it comes in in this nice friendly way in that the pieces are a nice bright colour and the lines come in actually as lines, which doesn't always happen with SVG files. Even though I create mine exactly the same way, I don't know what the difference is that makes them come in in a different way. And I know it's not just mine, because I've seen other videos on YouTube where users are saying this is what to do when a, an SVG comes in all black with seemingly no score lines. So I'm just showing you this one uh, as a friendly one. So if we look at the layers panel over here, the layers uh, panel symbol is this thing that looks like a stack of paper. You've got your properties uh, window there, your edit window, your layers panel, and here you can decide how big your artboard is. So back to the layers panel there. You've got a layer, which is the score lines, and then you've got another two layers, which are the main shape and the tiny little overlay that goes over the front of the box to make the actual envelope appearance. So what you would need to do here is you, my score lines always come in as solid lines. I think that's the case with um, most SVGs. I'm not sure, but mine do. And the reason they do is because if I set them up as dotted lines, occasionally, who knows why, that causes problems with design space. And as I sort of um, market my SVGs for Cricut users, I have to do the score lines in a way that I know causes the least issues. But it's dead simple to change. All you do is you select that layer. You can actually just directly click on the score line as well. And you would go up to your line dash pattern up here. And at the moment it's solid and you can choose any of these. And I don't know which one you would normally choose. I don't have a scan and cut machine. don't really understand how they work. Except that I know your fold lines are done with cuts rather than scores. So I'm just going to choose this first dotted pattern. I don't know if that's right. Apologies if it's not. It's just to show you that that's where you go to change the from a to change it from a solid line to a line that will cut with little dashes. So once you've done that, that was really quick and painless, wasn't it? You need to export it as an FCM file to use with your machine. And again, if you're using the online version. On this side, there should be a panel with a download button at the top. And if it's not, you just need to click on a little arrow that's around about here. And it opens, that box slides open and your download button is there. I'm on the downloaded version, so I'm going to go to File, Export, Slash Transfer, SCM File. And you get a few different versions on this downloaded version. This one, the top one, Export, FCM File, will just export it to where I want it to save it on my PC. Transfer FCM file via the internet I think is a way to transfer it via the internet to your machine. Again, uh, I don't really know a great deal about that. And this third version, transfer FCM file to scan and cut via USB cable. That's if you've got your scan and cut machine linked up to your Mac or your PC with a cable. So you'd use that and you could send it straight to your machine. I don't have a scan and cut machine, so I'm just going to use this top one, which will let me save it. And you can see I've already saved it when I was practicing. So you just um, highlight that and save it as you want. Five, snap, envelope, and save it. And then you could transfer that to a USB to use with your scan and cut machine. So that's showing how it works with a 
scan and cut friendly SVG. I'm going to show you it now with um, one that I know comes in black and with supposedly invisible score lines as they do sometimes but it's really not a problem and I know it does that with where are we chocolate explosion box so with this uh, explosion box I'm just going to delete that because that's the one I did when I was practicing as well might not let me do it never mind yes it has okay um so um this is uh, three explosion boxes with a central solid um, box with a lid and I know that this one, the small box in the centre, is the only one that actually fits easily on one 12x12 12 12 mat. But even so, just because of the way I've got it laid out, you get this warning. Warning, the imported SVG was resized automatically to fit within the red dashed line on the artboard. So that's the cutting area within a 12 by 12 mat. So you just click OK. And if we go to edit and select everything, it tells us how big it is here. It's in millimetres. With my SVGs, you get a PDF of assembly instructions and I always give the size that the SVG should be when you bring it in. So you would just need to go to that um, PDF. We're working with the solid central box at the moment and you can see that it should be 31.1 centimetres wide. 31.1 centimetres is 311 millimetres because you're just multiplying it by 10 because there are 10 millimetres to a centimetre. So select it all. Go to the width box, type in 311 and tab over and it automatically changes that to 27.7 which I think was right. Yes it is. So now we know it's the right size. It's still this unfriendly black. We can't see any scores. So that's what we're going to deal with next and then we'll look at, why, look at what to do with why it's hanging off the mat in a second. So I'm, now I'm going to go to the layers panel over here on the right hand side. Click on the layers panel and you get a layer for everything that's on screen. These top two, where we can't see anything, is where the score lines are. And these bottom two are the cut pieces. So I'm just going to click on that first one and then shift click on that second one. So now I've selected them both. And I'm going to go up to the fill colour up here in the top menu. I'm going to click on black and I'm just going to change it to any other colour. doesn't matter. I quite like purple. Right, so that's great. So it just looks a little bit easier to think about now. And now we're going to select these top two layers. So again, I'm just clicking on that first one, shift clicking on the second one, so I know I've got them both. And if we go to the line colour menu up here, we can see that we've got that grid, which means that there is no line colour at the moment. So you're just going to click on that, and I'm going to make it black. Woohoo! There are the score lines. So they were always there. It's just that you couldn't see them because in this particular SVG they came in as set to no line and the shapes came in as black. But as you can see it's easily fixable using your layers panel which lets you actually kind of see everything that's on there. So now I'm just going to drag and select this lid piece which as you can see at the moment is hanging off the edge of the mat which is no good. I'm just going to bring it onto the mat so it's where it needs to be. And so now you would need to export this mat as an FCM file that you could cut with your machine. So again, we're going to go export transfer FCM file. Now we get this warning. Tiny objects are automatically removed when converting to FCM because it's too small to cut. I'm not sure why that's coming up. I don't know whether that's just a standard uh, warning that comes up, but there's nothing in this M in this SVG that is complex. It's really simple. So I'm just going to click OK and ignore that. <coughs> and again, I'm going to choose the top one. And I would change that as a solid central box and save it. And then you could copy that to a USB and use it with your machine. Right. So I'm going to delete that because I'm, I don't need it. And now I'm going to bring in one of the same... SVGs for this which I know is huge chocolate box chocolate explosion box largest and we'll look at what happens and what you might need to do with this one 
So there we are. So obviously on my on the design space canvas, this is huge. It all comes in as one file. You get this warning that it's been resized. Don't worry about it. Just click OK. We know we're working with the largest explosion box. So we're going to go back to our PDF of instructions and it tells us it should be 89.9 centimeters wide. That's 899 millimeters. So I'm going to come back here, select everything. Go to my edit menu and make it 899 millimeters. Tab across there. And I did notice the other day, just going to zoom out there, that for some reason it didn't make the vertical measurement what it should be. So what I would do here is select everything, get rid of aspect ratio, go back to my file. It needs to be 89.5 tall. I would make sure that this said 89.5 to be absolutely certain. Why has it done that? Oh, 895. <laughs> Silly woman, we're in millimetres. Yeah, right. So now I know that that's exactly the size it should be. And obviously, as you can see, it's a really, really big box is this piece. First of all, though, we're going to deal with the fact that it's come in black and the score lines are not visible. So we're going to go to our layers panel. That piece that's up there on its own is the lid. So I'm just going to bring it down here and I'm going to select all of those. I can select all of them by clicking the top one and then shift clicking the bottom one and it selects everything. And again, as we did before, I'm going to go to fill and I'm going to make it any, any color. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we need to select these top layers, which we now know are the score lines. And as you can see, you can you can see them highlighted on screen now. And as before, it's come in as no line colour. So we're just going to make those black. And while they're still selected, we're going to choose the cut that we want from the line dash menu. So that's all done now. So it's all converted. You can see all the score lines. I don't know whether it's worth... I don't know whether, I don't even know where group is actually. <laughs> um, is it there? Yeah. Maybe it's worth grouping it so things can't move around now. I think I will. All I'm doing there is control G on my keyboard, by the way, just for, just for speed. In actual fact, because I think we'll only get two of those on a 12 by 12 mat anyway, you would probably just, you'd just make the one mat and cut it three times, wouldn't you? But this is a lid. We'll just group that together as well. Right. So you've got all the pieces of the file on your canvas. I'm going to put everything over here just for now because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. This, again, that's the, you get two bases with this box. You get one to attach the walls to and then you get another one if you want to use it. You don't have to to strengthen it inside. But again, you don't need two separate mats for that. You just need one mat. So I'm going to get rid of that forever. But just for now, I'm going to get rid of those. I'm not saving anything. I'm just going to zoom back in so we can see that a bit bigger. And I'm going to export this. Again, I'm just going to save it to my PC and I would call this largest box base FCM file save. And then I'm going to use the undo button and bring back in those things that I just deleted. Now I've done the base, so I'm going to get rid of that for good. And then I'm going to move the lid over here. This is the lid for the largest box. Just fits on a 12 by 12. And I would, again, let's just zoom out, get rid of all those bits that I know I don't need to export now. And I'd go File, Export. Again, we're getting that message. I'm not going to worry about it at all because I think that might just be a standard warning. Export FCM file, Largest Lid. And there it is, saved on your device, ready to put on a USB and use with your machine. I'm going to use undo now to bring those wall pieces back in. I'm going to get rid of the lid forever because I know I've done it. So now I'm going to bring a wall over. I think you can actually only get two walls. Just zoom in again. 
on one 12 by 12 mat yeah you're not going to get another one down there you would use this you'd probably use a4 in that case wouldn't you you just use, use your 12 by 12 mat obviously but you'd cut from a4 i think that would be the most economical cut so you need six walls but i would get rid of those i would export this file export fcm file and i would say largest walls times two and then save that and obviously once that's in your machine you would use that file three times to create six walls so i hope that helps so i've covered easy files i've covered what to do when a file comes in black and the score line's invisible and what to do when you need to work with one of my really big on canvas files and export it in um pieces if you like as fcm files i hope that really helps you um please forgive me if i've said anything ridiculous because as i say i don't really use this software i don't have a scan and cut machine um any feedback would be great actually and if it's really uh, less helpful than it could be i might do it again okay thanks a lot bye